Hi, I'm Jim Golden, Director of Finance and Support Services. This is uh, an update on Title 32 Special Districts. Longmont first put a, adopted an ordinance on special districts in 2005, and subsequently the uh, first and only special district we put in place was for the Harvest Junction Metro District. Uh, currently, the uh, Twin Peaks Mall redevelopment plan is considering uh, also proposing a special district for use in Longmont, and that would be our, our second special district. So we are going to give an update on special districts and, and how they are, are put in place in, in the state of Colorado. Um, a special district is a quasi-municipal corporation, and it's a political subdivision of the state of Colorado, and it's formed under Title 32 of the state statutes. It's a, it's a tax-exempt finance mechanism, and it's used to finance a portion of the total cost of public infrastructure, and it may own, operate, and maintain public improvements and facilities, and provide covenant control and architectural review services. Historically, public improvements for developments <coughs> were provided by <coughs> the governing municipal municipalities and counties. <coughs> Excuse me. In reaction to the decreased financial ability of jurisdictions to continue to provide the required public improvements, the legislator implemented provisions to allow special districts within Colorado. So a special district can finance a number of different uh, improvements, including uh, street improvements, in, uh, uh, drainage improvements, safety protection improvements, parks and rec, water improvements, sanitary sewer improvements, transportation improvements, mosquito control improvements, television relay and transportation improvements, fire protection improvements. Within each of those categories, a special district can also finance costs associated with uh, facilitating the public improvements. In the case of a redevelopment project, these could include site demolition and remediation, a lease buyout and relocation costs, and land acquisition costs in addition to the actual soft and hard costs associated with the public improvements. So special districts are financed through the issuance of tax-exempt bonds that are to be repaid from special district revenues, and those revenues can include a property tax levied by the district, special ownership taxes, fees and charges that may be imposed for the provision of facilities and services by the district, and revenues received from outside sources, such as sales tax or other revenue sharing from a city or a county or property and sales tax increment from an urban renewal authority. The approving jurisdiction, which in our case would be the city of Longmont, is not liable for debt issued by the special district. So there are statutory procedures for forming a special district. Uh, there, the first, there's a submittal of a service plan to the jurisdiction in which the property is located. So the service plan is similar to a city charter or a constitution, it's the authorizing document for the special district. Once, we, uh, uh, once the service plan is approved, a petition for organization is filed with a district court. There's a court hearing, and then the court orders for a organizational election. Colorado Constitution puts in place the time frames in which debt and taxing authorizations for, dis dis for a special district may be obtained to May and November of even years and, uh, no and November only of odd numbered years. And then after the election, those uh, results are certified with the district court. And uh, finally, the order and decree of the court uh, is recorded for the organization to become effective. Uh, the approving jurisdiction, the city, has the authority to approve the service plan as presented, approve it with conditions, or else it can disapprove the service plan. And the jurisdiction has the right to require additional limitations of the district. Um, those additional uh, requirements can include uh, restrictions on debt issuance, um, disclosure of the district existence, and mill levy caps. A district will always have a financial limitation on the debt capacity it can reasonably finance. Uh, that, that limitation is based on a few different factors, including the permitted mill levy, 
the permitted time over which a debt may be issued, the number of years it can be outstanding, the market interest rate at the time of the issuance of the debt, and then the ultimate assessed valuation uh, of the property and the timing from which the development occurs and builds out. For those improvements that cannot be financed by the district, the developer will be required to fund public improvements um, at the same, as the same is required under development or public improvement agreements currently with the city. So in Longmont, within our own um, special district ordinance that we adopted in 2005, we have our own procedures for forming a special district. Petitioners must first submit a letter providing a summary outline of the proposed district. Staff will uh, meet with those petitioners and in, uh, to obtain any additional information necessary for the city council to determine whether that special district should be considered. The staff provides a recommendation to the council whether to accept or reject the application based on these following guidelines. First is the uniqueness of the proposed development, including whether it provides a necessary or desired use, business, or service that's not currently provided. The second is whether the cost of the proposed necessary infrastructure or additional amenities is extraordinary or would otherwise prevent or limit construction of the proposed development. And then third is the staff availability and the estimated time needed for the review of the application. Council considers the staff recommendation and then they make a final decision on whether the application should be reviewed. So once the council decides to accept an application for review, the, the petitioner submits a proposed service plan for review. Under the ordinance, staff does have up to three months to conduct that review. There's an uh, application fee of $5,000 that the petitioner must uh, file, as well as they must pay the expenses of the city for the consultants that's used to help conduct the review. Uh, we typically will use our financial advisor as well as our bond council to assist in that review. And then the service plan must include information required by the city code, including the mill levy limits, a capital plan, and then a financial plan for the um, district. After completion of the staff review, the council will hold a public hearing and to consider whether it satisfies the criteria of the Special District Act and the city code. Council will then either approve, approve with conditions, or else disapprove the service plan. If it's, if it's approved, the Metro Service District has to submit uh, annual re reports to the city um, in September of each year. Any amendments to the service plan of the Metro District will require city council approval. On the night of the 15th, there will be a presentation to the council on a proposed amendment to the Harvest Junction Metro District to allow the district to refinance its debt through a uh, service plan amendment. So a special district governing body is made up of a board of directors of five to seven members, five or seven board members. Directors are elected by a majority vote of the eligible electors, and those are any individual who is registered to vote in Colorado who resides within the special district, owns taxable property within the boundaries of the special, special district, or else is under contract to purchase property within the district with an obligation to pay taxes. Eligible electors are eligible to serve on the board of directors and to vote in district elections. So a special district is a government. It has a board of directors, meets on a regular basis to handle the business of the special district. Uh, special districts engage professional management companies. Uh, general count, the, the, special management com the professional management companies will manage the special district operations. They have uh, general counsel and an accountant that ex is experienced with governmental accounting. The district board is, is publicly accountable. They must hold open meetings with due notice to members of the public. They must maintain minutes of all meetings and other records for public inspection. They must ad adopt annual budgets at a public hearing that are held by the board of directors of the district. And then they must also submit 
to annual financial audits, which they do also have to provide to the governing jurisdiction um, each year in their annual reports. So what are the benefits to approving a, jur uh, a jurisdiction? It provides a mechanism for financing the construction and the maintenance of public improvements within a specific area in order to facilitate and sustain the aesthetics of that area. It addresses local infrastructure needs while allocating the cost of the solution to those that are directly benefiting from it. It facilitates growth in the market value of property within the district, which improves, which improves the approving jurisdiction's overall financial condition. These benefits can be realized without putting the property owners at risk of an exorbitant mill levy through the Title 32 Special District. It maintains a competitive market with other jurisdictions that also utilize special districts. So here are examples of uh, some retail developments that have been financed in the past using uh, Title 32 Special Districts, a couple in Aurora, um, the development at uh, Flatirons down in Broomfield, Loveland's Centera development, Lockridge and Thornton, uh, Streets of South Glen and Centennial, Northfield at Stapleton and Denver, and Belmar and Lakewood, and of course the Harvest Junction development here in Longmont. Now these are uh, examples of those uh, developments that have uh, utilized Title 32 special district districts along with an urban renewal authority. And so again, Corner Star and Aurora, Centera and Loveland, Lockridge and Thornton, South Glen and Centennial, Northfield and Denver, and Belmar and Lakewood. So that's the extent of the uh, general presentation on special districts. On the 15th, we will be available to answer questions on this information, and staff will also present specific information related to the proposed Harvest Junction Special District Service Plan Amendment. Thank you. Mayor, members of council, my name is Valerie Skitt and I'm the city clerk. We're here today to talk about our election ward boundaries. At least once every 10 years, our charter requires that we review our ward boundaries in order to ensure that we have approximately the same number of qualified electors within each ward. As you know, our city is divided into three wards, and the map here shows that um, those three wards in color. On the northeast corner of the city in the light brown is Ward 1. The yellow on the southern and southwest portion of the city is Ward 2, and the green in the northwest corner of the city is Ward 3. Also shown on the map are the uh, precinct boundaries that the county establishes. And these are the new precincts that were established once uh, redistricting was done in 2011. The municipal charter requires three things. One, that the, any boundary changes be done within uh, at least 120 days before any general municipal election. This year is a, would be a special election year for Longmont, so we don't need to worry about the time frame in terms, as long as we get it done this year. The second is that the boundaries shall be contiguous and compact as possible and that they shall have approximately the same number of re registered electors within or qualified electors within each ward. A qualified elector is someone who is eligible to vote so they must be 18 years of age and live within the city limits and they are registered to vote. In addition to the criteria that our charter outlines we also try whenever practical not to um, separate or divide any precinct lines, county precinct lines because that would require having two different ballot types within a same precinct. The state legislature withdrew district voting lines in 2011 and the county then redrew their precinct lines. There were very few changes to those precinct lines um, on the county's behalf other than to line them up with our city boundaries where new annexations had occurred over the last 10 years and to split a couple of precincts that had um, too many voters within them. So what we're here to do now is talk about um, redrawing our ward boundaries. The matrix that you're now seeing on the screen shows what our current ward distribution is. We show the registered voters in each ward, the target of 18,881, 18,881. That would be an exact distribution of registered voters between the three wards. 
The current breakdown then shows the difference and the deviation from that equal distribution. As you can see from this matrix, Ward 1 is, pretty, is right on target in terms of the number of reg qualified electors within that ward. Ward 2 and Ward 3, however, over the last 10 years have gotten a little bit out of sync, and um, that's probably where our primary adjustments need to be made. We have developed a plan for your consideration in change, making amendments to those boundaries. The first would be to develop a minimum of three boundary amendment options. And unless otherwise directed, we'll primarily concentrate be, uh, making those adjustments between Ward 2 and Ward 3. Set, we hope to have, well, we will have that done by the end of May. Then we're going to take that um, information out to the public and seek their input from June through September. We're going to do a number of things, which I'll explain in just a minute in terms of a community involvement process. Finally, we'll present an, provide an analysis back to City Council of all three options and any additional options that may come out as a result of the uh, public input. We, we will bring that back to you in late September and then get your direct, final direction on the ward boundaries and bring back the ordinances in October, November for uh, final adoption. The community involvement plan, uh, taking this information out to the public, we have three different areas that we're, we'd like to talk about. First of all is information displays. Our plan is to currently have the options um, in, on large storyboards with uh, comment cards. They will be displayed at the Civic Center, the Library, and the Senior Center. We also will take those storyboards out to special events where we can and have that information out so the public can offer us comments at those special events. We will post that information on the city's website and rather than comment cards, we'll have a short online survey for them to fill out. Then we're gonna take the presentations on the road. We have listed a number of places that we uh, plan to specifically go and would welcome your input on additional area places that we might be able to take this information to. Those include the neighborhood group leaders. Uh, we will have some community open houses, probably about three of those. The Latino business leaders breakfast, uh, the St. Vrain Latino Coalition League and League of Women Voters and the Senior Center groups. Um, additionally, we'll use all of our sources of uh, media information and put this information out there as well. We will hope to have a uh, feature an article in Long Lot Life in the July-August edition. We'll do a press release to all of the local media's uh, outlets and we hope to have Times Call also do an article on the ward district reboundering, boundary, redrawing of the boundaries, excuse me. Um, one of the things that we will do is send a postcard out to any of the voters within those precincts who may move between precincts, uh, between wards, and to notify them of their opportunities to provide us input on the ward boundaries. Um, in addition, um, there may be other options that come up during the community involvement process, so we will add those to the mix and bring those back to council with a thorough analysis of the pros and cons of each one for your consideration. What we're here tonight is just to get approval uh, from you on the plan, developing the three options and making most of the adjustments between Ward 2 and Ward 3, and to get any additional input on, on community involvement opportunities that we ha may have missed. I will be present at the City Council meeting to answer any questions and to get your input. Thank you.